Good evening, everybody. Today we're back with the third instalment of our Fans Talk About Buckethead series. And today, it's Ladies' Night. So, Fembots unite. Woo! Albano Slug. How or when did you first hear of Buckethead? I actually heard of Buckethead through my brother, who plays the guitar. Um, he became a huge fan of him, I think, around 2015. His album that he really loved um, was The Cuckoo Clocks of Hell, so I think that was the first one I ever heard. In about 2016, I started getting into Buckethead a little bit more on my own. I'm so happy my brother introduced me to him because I don't know if I would have heard of him otherwise. I first heard about Buckethead when I was a teenager. I was really, really into Primus and I'd seen a few of their live videos with Buckethead. Um, I didn't know who it was at the time, I just thought it was some crazy guy who's amazing on guitar. I don't think I really started looking into his music more until I heard Watching the Boats with my dad. Obviously it was so different than what I'd seen him do was Primus, like really crazy, funky, shreddy stuff, and then going the complete opposite direction with this really meaningful um, song with loads and loads of feelings. So it was from there I just thought there's a lot to this guy and it seems really interesting. And obviously, Guitar Hero Jordan was the most fun to play. I first heard of Buckethead in 2007. I was really into rock music and playing bass at that time. I first saw a tour video of his and really liked songs he was playing, and I shocked by his skill. My bandmate told me his name was Buckethead and he used to be a member of Guns N' Roses. I was a little confused because I thought he's a little bit too out there to fit in with Guns N' Roses. And then I listened to Enter the Chicken, Kuma and many other albums he's released and I just got hooked. Later, I just found him to be a good guy with a kind personality. So I became a loyal fan, a Buckybutt. I first heard of Buckethead probably about a year and a half ago. I was searching YouTube for Slash Solos and kept recommending Bucket. And I finally clicked on it. Thank goodness I did. I actually heard him on the first date I ever went on with my eventual husband. So if that tells you anything, I married the guy who showed me Buckethead. <laughs> um, we were both in his car and we were listening to music and he put on Buckethead and he's like, you like Buckethead, right? And I was like, uh, who? And he was like, oh my God, you don't know Buckethead? And so he put on Coma. That was the first album I had ever, ever heard from Buckethead. And I was just instantly like, oh my God, what is this? he's like, Buckethead. And I went home that night and basically thought about Buckethead all night instead of my date <laughs> and was just looking at him online and listening to all his music and learning that he is like my twin, my long lost like soul mate because he loves everything that I love. Like my favorite movie since I was like eight years old is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Here I have uh, Leatherface and I also have just as much hair as Buckethead. I'm really glad that I finally f discovered him uh, in 2013. It's been it substantially made my life better ever since. I first heard of Buckethead a long old time in high school when Guitar Hero was massive. So naturally this goes to Guitar Hero 2. Boyfriend at the time was really into it and played like every song on Expert except for Jordan. He couldn't finish Jordan. Later my friend decided to get the game and we took it into uh, the practice mode so I could hear the whole song because it was cool. Freaked out and then I started following him pretty much religiously after that, especially whenever I saw him play it live. In October of 15, I saw a suggested video on YouTube autoplay um, called Soothsayer at the Gothic Theater and my jaw dropped. I made the video bigger and saw that this buckethead person was wearing a mask and a bucket. 
I was hooked instantly and have listened to only Buckethead about 95% of the time since that. What is your favorite piece of Buckethead merch that you own? My favorite piece of Buckethead merch is the painting that I recently bought. It hasn't arrived yet, but I really like it because it reminds me of an evil-looking Homer Simpson. I found this old um, cut-up t-shirt in my drawer, and I thought it would be really cool to draw Buckethead on this, so I did. So I said Buckethead land there. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. I kind of like it. My bag, when I first got it, looked very boring, so I thought, why not make a bucket head patch for it? So I made this thing here. It says save the chickens, and it was quite fun to make. Live in Buckethead land, and the Buckethead 1031, and also, Bevo from Buckethead's birthday show. Um, I have this awesome custom bucket head piece that my husband actually got uh, commissioned for me for last Christmas by a local artist that we really love, Jesse Jackson. And um, I just really love it. I think the style is really cool and it, it like captures Buckethead's essence and we hang it up right over our couch. So when we have guests over and they're like, who, what is that? We're like, Buckethead, duh. And then we put on Buckethead and it's perfect. Shadows Between the Sky, one of my favorites, and it's signed. So this was like the first signed one I got by him, and I was really excited because I was like, oh my god, Buckethead touched this. <laughs> my favorite piece of Buckethead merch that I own is something that he gave me at his uh, birthday show. He gave me a couple of things, but my very favorite is the tiny little guitar that he brought out from behind his amps. I didn't even see him pull it out uh, whenever he was bringing out six bags six bags but he walked back after he was finished handing out all of the toys and i saw a little box this thing and uh he walked over to where i was at held out the box and the guy to my immediate left tried to grab it he was like nah nah it was fun and that's yeah that means a lot because 50th birthday <gasps> my small pocket head drawing right there if you can see it and I love that it's a one-of-a-kind that I own and that it is a person on a path or on a journey which means a lot to me. What piece of Buckethead merch would you love to own that you don't already have? I would love to be able to afford one of his big paintings um, one day because I feel that I will be getting a priceless piece of art from my favorite person. And a little piece of him is in every work of art that he does. And I, being an artist myself, really appreciate that. I would really like to own a vinyl of Pike 65. It's the Pike that speaks to me the most. I listen to it the most, so it'd be really cool to have that. A physical copy of Pike 65, because whenever I found that song, I was I hadn't listened to Buckethead in years. And uh, I was in a dark place whenever I had found it. And he was like, hey! grab and now I'm here. I don't have a piece of Buckethead merch that I would like to own. Instead the thing I would like the most is to shake his hand and say thank you. Well I'm just really content and happy in Buckethead land. I don't want for nothing. I have everything that I've felt like I just had to have. Like Crime Slunk Sing album. I have that now. I would love to own one of Buckethead's paintings. I love his paintings so, so much. They are just so unusual and bizarre, yet so simple, and yet they portray these, these really disturbing, bizarre characters that look like they could have these immense backstories, and honestly, I think that is a really, really valuable talent to have as a painter. It's something, as a painter myself, I've been trying to work on, and it's difficult. It's really difficult to put all that emotion into a painting, it really is. But yeah, I really, I value his, his paintings and his talent and I would love to own one, so fingers crossed one day I will. Definitely his artwork, like his paintings and stuff like that, I, I love every single piece of art that I see that he's done. I feel like they capture his like playful, endearing, weirdo soul so well. And so hopefully someday I will be able to 
start collecting his art because I just love it. What is your favorite on stage buckethead moment? It's hard to choose one favorite because I love all his moments on stage. But I still gonna say one. That is kind of weird. I love to see him turning the buttons of his guitar, not only the kill switch, and pushing the pedals. He's, he's very creeps when he's doing it, and it looks kind of hot. I like any onstage moment where he cracks out some martial arts moves. I've done martial arts since I was a kid. I loved Bruce Lee growing up, so two of my favorite things together, my favorite guitarist. Cracking out the nunchucks, it is just perfection to me. Generally, my favorite onstage moment that Buckethead does is when he puts giant glove things on his hands and does the robot. I just think it's so entertaining to watch him do the robot. He does it so well, it's, it's just so cool. Specifically, probably my favorite moment is when he was performing with Les Claypool in 2002. He's wearing this really big yellow rain jacket and he puts these gloves on his hands and they're like gray gloves with really long sort of goofy fingers and he does the robot with those on and it just it looks really bizarre and strange and funny and that's that's what I love about Buckethead how just totally unique and out of the box he is and I just loved watching that. My favorite on stage Buckethead moment I would have to say is when he waved at me a gesture of thanks for the gift I got him. I got him a really nice journal and had it engraved that said, do not fear, just believe. And that was just a great moment. When he invited Oscar Lopez up on stage to play his iconic song, Soothsayer, and to just allow a huge fan of his to play his most popular song is an unbelievably kind and giving thing for any performer to do and that's why I love Buckethead so much. I always think back to just the first time I ever saw Buckethead live. I had never watched a video of him doing toy time before. So when he started doing it, I was like, what is he doing? What is, like, I was just like, oh my God. Like, I, I was like, is he giving people toys right now? It was just like, I could not have expected it less. <laughs> and yet it was so Buckethead. It was like the most Buckethead thing that he could ever do. And I was just like completely charmed and just fell in love with him even more because of course he gives us toys. Like, of course, that's totally something that he would do. And then, you know, when he let everybody like press the kill switch on his guitar, it was just like, we're all Buckethead. And he's just, he's so good at engaging the crowd and kind of like reminding us that he knows that we're not just like this sea of money because it's never about that with him. It's always, so much more personal than that and he he's good at like just inserting himself into our lives in so many different ways and I love that he is able to connect with us in his live shows and I've seen like so many concerts and I've spent so much more on other bigger concerts with huge like like technical shows and everything and and um and that like $20 ticket to go see Buckethead at this little venue down the street was the best, they're always the best shows that that I could ever see. He makes every single live performance unforgettable and special in a way that these big, huge bands that have all these crazy technical parts of their show never could. And I love that about him. My favorite on stage Buckethead moment is whenever I gave him the Death Cube K doll box thingy majiggy made out of paper mache and cardboard the earlier this year. I was holding it up with two hands and with one massive, massive Buckethead hand, he was like, grabbed that sucker and I was like, what? You are a monster of a man. Kept looking at it, walked over to his chest box thing that he has by the amps, walked around to where he keeps the toys on the amp, like waved pee sticks over and they were kind of like next to each other for a while. So I was like, he's saying, what's going on here? The mystery of that still haunts me to this day. I love it. I love it so much. I wish I knew what was going on, but I really like the fact that I do not.
What Buckethead song or album would you recommend to a new Buckethead fan and why? And I guess I would recommend Pog 218. I'll say that today, but that might be different tomorrow. I would definitely recommend the song Welcome to Buckethead Land. Don't ask me why, just go and listen and rock out to it. I would recommend Pike 125 along the riverbank. This was the first Pike that I ever really got into. So it's got a bit of gentler stuff in there. It's got some really epic guitar pieces, some of my very favorite of Bucketheads ever. It's got sort of a bit of a bit of weird stuff, but not too too weird in the song Viewmasters. Definitely Pike 65 because I went through an emotional roller coaster with that song. It really, just depends on what they are into because there's a lot there's a lot of genres that he dips his thinkies into. So I think obviously the first go to would be Soothsayer. It's his most popular song. All Buckethead fans know it, and there's a reason for that. It's just perfection. It's an amazing song. Other than that, my favourites at the moment are Beginning Putrefaction. I really like the album Cuckoo Clocks of Hell just because they're really heavy, really dark, really sinister um, and really experimentational. But on the other end of the spectrum, if I just want to chill out, I would listen to Cavernous or The Patrolman. My go-to, just like most people, is probably Soothsayer. There's a reason why it's such a popular song. Um, it's just really easy to listen to for most people. I love Albino Slug. I think it's like one of the most fun albums. It's really catchy. So I'll put that on a lot of the time for new people. Or obviously Coma and Electric Sea and Electric Tears are really great. Um, my favorite ever, <laughs> Hold Me Forever. I just think it's like the most beautiful <laughs> assemblage of music ever written. So if I have a friend who's like, you know, really feeling some of the first stuff that I'll show them, I'll be like, all right, I think you're ready for this. Because I've never met somebody who didn't think that that Pike is gorgeous. I would recommend Pike 15 Viewmaster to a new fan because it has heavy and soothing songs on it and shows his ability to play many different genres. If Buckethead is watching, what would you like to say to him? I would like to say, Keep staying in good shape and make sure you get enough sleep. It's good for your heart. And um, I'm not sure I will see you someday, but I'm pretty sure that I'll stay with you in Buckethead Land forever. And Buckethead, if you're watching, thank you from the bottom of my heart and all Bucket Bots in the whole world. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the music. It's definitely opened my mind to different types of music, uh, different kinds of sounds. And um, like a lot of Buckethead fans, I play guitar, so he's really inspired me to actually try to pick up some harder techniques um, and do things I never thought I'd be able to do before. Um, and really inspired me to keep going. Let's keep working on Buckethead land and more music, please. Music, like paintings are super cool. I love them. I've been I've been creeping on them quite a bit, but I need more music selfishly. More music. Thank you, Buckethead. Thank you so much for all you have done. Uh, your talent is just incomprehensibly amazing. Um, all the music you've released, the many many hours of listening that you've given us, um, as as well as just your kindness like obviously you don't talk much but you just seem like a really really genuine sweet person um thank you for your amazing creativity with your paintings and your whole whole character um it's, it's rare to have that creative sort of talent um i ver you're very inspiring to me um as someone that loves art um and pretty much i don't think i would be the same person I am today if I hadn't discovered your music you're sort of the backing track to my life like no matter what I'm doing Buckethead's sort of playing so if I'm driving or working out or studying or cleaning or just chilling out Buckethead's always on and there's there's always music of, of yours to suit the situation um, and so 
sometimes after a long day I'll come home and I just I won't be feeling great and honestly I'll just put your music on and it all just gets better. I feel normal again. It's weird but I feel normal when I listen to your music. It feels like I'm coming home. Your music just gets me and thank you. Thank you so much and please keep up the amazing work. We all love you and please do take care of yourself as well. Um, I really hope I can see you live one day as someone that lives in New Zealand. It's, it's kind of difficult. Uh, we live quite far away from the rest of the world obviously so Hopefully one day I'll make it to one of your live shows. Fingers crossed. Also, fun fact, you and I have the same birthday, May the 13th. Woo! Buckethead has a way of always knowing what to say without any words. And so that's why it's so hard to think of words. He has this the ability to just like somehow know what what it feels to be like everyone in the world and in his music like anyone can relate it's nice that videos like this exist because he can just hear us talk about him and hear all of the little things about him that we notice and appreciate and i think that you know just these videos that natternet puts together they say enough you know and of course like thank you doesn't even begin to sum it up Buckethead, I would just love to say thank you. Thank you for being my constant companion for four years. Your music has comforted me, calmed, soothed, energized, and inspired me all and all the other bots too. Your music is incredibly healing for me and releases old wounds I've been carrying around for years. It gives me courage to face difficult and touching and tough times. I don't know how, I've lived this long without your music and presence in my life. Please take care of yourself and all the bots love you. Thank you so much Natanit for having me. I love your videos so much. Like you put so much effort and research into them and it's it's amazing. I don't think I could find any of that information to that extent to myself so I appreciate and I'm sure as many other fans do we appreciate you doing it for us um, I haven't been a fan for very long relative to other fans so um, I'm very still very grateful to be involved in this video um, and remember that things are not always as they seem sometimes balloons will spell your doom but a gory head stump can mean good luck Woo! I've only recently like started to meet people in the Buckethead community and I'm super appreciative of Natternet for everything that he does and part of the reason I know so much about Buckethead is because of him. So I'm super, super thankful to be involved and to have the opportunity to talk about Buckethead and meet more people and I'm excited to hopefully see Buckethead again if he goes on tour. Um, and to meet more people in the community and uh, yeah, just thank you so much for the opportunity. I wrote Bucky a letter a few days ago, but before I post it, I sent a message to Natternet to ask if Buckethead Land's mail address is still available. He told me that it's no longer in use and gave me another address. And then he asked me to be in this video, so I've been talk about all the contents of the letter in this video. I never understood what Bucky had said at the beginning of the song Pieces monologue. I was going to ask my American friend to listen to it and tell me what he said. And then Leathernet made the subtitles for it in the new video. So that helps a lot. I've been getting a lot of help in all things Bucky had. So thank you Leathernet. Thank you all the Buckybot and love you Mr. Buckyhead. I want to say that I've made awesome and kind friends through the Buckethead groups and especially through my own Buckethead group, Buckethead Bucketbots and from meeting other bots in line for the shows or at concerts at the rail. They are incredibly kind and loving people. Also, my dream came true on May 7th of this year when I got to finally shake Buckethead's hand and he gave me his guitar pick, which I cherish, and this is my most cherished possession. 
thank you, Nanonet, for doing this for all of us. We really appreciate it. Thank you again for letting me be part of the video. Uh, I really loved the last one. So, hope this is good. See ya. Bye. Oh, and lastly, I'd say come to Europe. Please. What's going on? Ah! I was like, yeah! Five seconds later, fantastic, fantastic, fancy, fantastic, and fancy, fan, fanciastic. Uh, <gasps> you're gonna get that face every single time. What? How do you? How do you? How do I need a kill switch?